Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I am a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development, all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. In today's episode, I meet with the award-winning online student Ian Danton to discuss returning to education after a break from study. Hello, Ian, and thank you very much for taking some time out of your day to talk to me about, on this podcast here. I'm be really interested to know all about yourself as a in your background as a student, but also uh, what came before that. So, I heard that you graduated in 1991. So, what came after your graduation before you started studying again? Now. Uh, well, I was uh, the first time round, uh, as we will discuss later, I was a very poor student. Uh, I worked in retail. I was actually full time for my last year in retail, which uh, is not advice I would give anybody. Um, and as a result of that, I was offered a job in retail. Uh, my boss at the time said, Ian, I'm going to make a retailer of you. And uh, he sort of um, followed through on his promise. So I became a manager. Um, I developed uh, within that over the next few years. Uh, I ended up um, moving and um, having to restart, but um, eventually uh, got promoted and promoted again and uh, became a store manager after some time back in the early 2000s. Um, and then as a store manager for, uh, for a major retailer, um, food retailer, I sort of um, developed and got into larger stores um, and just sort of developed um, my interest in people really through that. Mm -hmm. Um, So I just became curious as to why people made the decisions they did, why they um, made some of the rather poor uh, decisions that they made, uh, why certain behaviours you know, were exhibited in certain situations. And more in particular, uh, why there was so much resistance at times to various different uh, instances, issues, personalities, whatever it might be. So that uh, really developed into an interest in psychology. Um, My first uh, degree was in philosophy and theology. Um, So psychology um, has been something that I've sort of looked at in not very great detail for a number of years um, but I decided you know what I'm going to do something about it and I looked online found Derby and they did a conversion course uh, which Mm. meant that I could sort of maybe focus on it as a second career and um, uh, after I retire from my current career and that's why I'm here I'm sort of um, working through my master's with a view to hopefully doing a PhD um, and eventually doing research in psychology Mm. um so briefly that's how i got here and why i'm here so you've taken a quite a long gap away from study then 30 years 30 years so how did you find going back to studying after a 30-year gap fortunately i found that i'd improved rather markedly in my ability to um, maintain concentration and focus. Mm. Um, I was one of the worst students that uh, I would ever care to consider uh, the first time around. Uh, in three years, I had seven essays. Um, I almost got chucked out twice. Mm. Um, I was pretty good at talking. Um, and that was probably the only reason I survived the first time round. And the fact that I actually did love philosophy in particular and was really interested in the subject. So I've enjoyed it the second time round. <laughs> Sounds a bit like me. We did a podcast about Freed and Fail a, a few episodes ago in the series. And it was really interesting because we, me and the person I was interviewing talked about how we'd both been a bit like that in the sense that we didn't apply ourselves too much earlier on in our lives. And then now you've gone back to university and you've started and you found that you're more applied than before is that do you think because of your experience working in the industry that's a really good question not one i've considered i think it's more likely that it's just i've grown up is too trite a way of saying it but i've just become more aware of what makes me tick and more aware of what um can distract me and i'm better prepared to uh, deal with it um working in a job so when I worked uh, in my job I was 
completely focused um, and I tried incredibly hard. I would work um, very long hours and and be very dedicated. Uh, and that was a complete contrast to myself as a student. Um, and I guess the difference now is that I found the intent within study that I found previously within work. So I know that's a bit of a, a, a convoluted answer, but it isn't as simple as just, oh, it's um, I've learnt it over the years. Mm. It's very interesting, actually, transferring some things. Some things very easily transfer from one thing to another, yet others don't always follow. Sometimes when you go back into a place where you've been before, you slip into this old mindset. So it could have been very easy for you to go and start studying in a similar way to what you did previously was it a conscious decision then when you came back to study in a different way or was it just something that felt natural to you i live in i live in northern ireland so uh, finding a, a place where i would be able to sort of do a conversion course uh, would have been impossible um to do it uh, in person on campus uh, so that was the primary driver of choosing um an online course i, I think you're right though uh, that the the secondary benefit of it is that it's given me a different way of operating. So uh, I structure my uh, my day around my job uh, clearly because that's what pays the bills. Um, but then I sort of put my study into it afterwards. So um, being able to do that and plan it in a different way probably did help. Uh, so it wasn't wasn't so much the choice of studying online and making that the the reason for doing things. It was more of a um, a, a consequence of being where I am, but nevertheless a positive consequence. Mm. So having decided to go back to university now, do you think you made the right decision and are you happy that that's the course of action that you're on? Absolutely. Oh, goodness me, I cannot tell you <laughs> how much I love uh, being part of the University of Derby Online, being part of a, a student community again, um, studying and doing something different to uh, that which I've done for the last 30 years. It has been amazing. I guess I could probably sort of say from that, I wish I'd done it a little bit earlier, mm. but wishes, etc. cetera. I, they, it is what it is. I've got to where I am and uh, I'm happy to have made this decision. Good. I'm glad. That's a huge thing. And I do think the University of Derby online and University of Derby in, uh, as a whole, but I only experience it online, is amazing. And the reason I think it's amazing is because it listens. And mm. believe you me, you'll see that as a uh, as a sort of theme as we go. Yeah, I think listening is something that's so important. Um, it's a skill. It's definitely a skill that I want to get better at. So when you went back into starting to study online, did you find any barriers or any difficulties when you went back to studying? Apart from broadband. <laughs> I think we all face that at the moment. Time is always um, is always something that I battle with and I'm sure everybody battles with, with to a certain extent. Um, however, if you truly want something, and I'll personalise that, if I truly want something, it, I will find time. And that's what I've done. Um, so... I don't think there was anything that's unexpected that's uh, impacted me apart from, of course, COVID-19. Um, and that's obviously impacted on everybody. There was a period of time, uh, especially when it first hit, um, where I found it very difficult to balance both my job and my studies. Uh, but again, the university uh, very quickly acted upon that and um, I was able to get it back under control. And yeah, uh, I found a way through. I know I definitely, when I started studying part-time whilst working, I found difficulties in balancing the time that I needed. But I found a lot of it came, as, as I went through and got more experience with it, I got better. I don't know if you found that. So when you started, you might have been a bit slower compared to what you are now. Yes, I am. I, I can find, for instance, using the library or, you know, in fact, just finding articles is a huge amount quicker now. Uh, I've just got used to uh, being able to hone down in on what I'm looking for. With regard to, um, you know, balancing my time, uh, I'm better at giving the amount of time I need to each unit than I was previously. Um, and uh, I guess I've learned as well just to try and keep a little bit ahead rather than I, yeah. I at first I just tried to keep on target if you know what I mean now yeah. I'm just trying to stay as a little ahead uh, as I can 
yeah, I think that's huge, a really important piece of advice, actually, is trying to get ahead if possible. Uh, that's definitely something I'm going to keep trying to do with my course whenever it's possible to do that. Is there anything that you would like to mention more about about coming back to study? I think it's a highly personal decision. Mm. I think sometimes individuals seek others' advice um, and worry that they need to follow it too much. Um, I think ultimately, if you feel that it's the right decision for you, then go for it. Um, I do understand and can see that there might be a barrier. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's a financial poten- potential financial bar- barrier, but other barriers might be, you know, how will I manage time and how will I manage anything else? So I think that uh, uh, if you feel that it's right for you, you should go for it. I should also say I'm very lucky in that my children are grown up. Um, so I have a 20 year old, an 18 year old, and a 16 year old. And so the time that I would have spent with them has now, you know, it, well, they're all up in their rooms doing what they do. Yeah. And uh, it gives me freedom to do what I want to do. And I also agree with you on that front. I'm also lucky in that both that I don't have children to care for at the moment and things like that so i am lucky but later in the series we will be interviewing someone in a similar position to you who's come back to university so you have a gap out who does have children so um i'll link that episode in the description of the video i mentioned at the end uh for anyone who's interested in that so since you've come back to university how have you found completing assignments challenging um i think there are several aspects to completing an assignment um, that make it more difficult coming back from a a considerable time off. Mm -hmm. There's a sort of a a fear of um, picking up the pen or more to the point, the uh, keyboard, um, that can sort of inhibit you if you're not careful. And um, when I first first started writing uh, my, my first assignment coming back, it, it was very, very difficult just to sort of think, am I getting this right? And you're trying to draw an, I was trying to draw an experience which was 30 years ago to when I'd last written an essay mm. and thinking, you know, just does this feel so clunky? Uh, when you write an email to a colleague, it's just, you bang down some thoughts and you, you send it away. This was a very, very different experience. So, um, yeah, I do think it's challenge uh, a challenge. I think uh, I the very first thing I did was just, um, start writing um, and not worry about whether or not I was writing an introduction, whether or not I was writing um, an aspect of the essay, the assignment that was, uh, or the report or whatever it might be that was important. Um, I would just sort of start writing. And then uh, that got me back into the sort of more academic way of thinking. And then I started to sort of hone that as time went on. Um, the other the other thing that was really different and and I found very challenging was uh, the with referencing it, it's sort of completely different to um, what I remember I, I do not recall ever putting any great particular emphasis on referencing uh, 30 years ago uh, there was no real internet uh, to speak of and um, you know I guess that what's happened is that the importance of uh, giving the intellectual uh, acknowledgement to whoever wrote the piece of work has become more and more critical. Uh, And as such, um, building and referencing into the the work that I do was was quite alien at first. Um, And I guess the tension for me was, these are my ideas. This is my thought. (laughs) And now you're telling me that I actually have to go and give somebody else the credit for it? Now, come on. But I've realized that, of course, over time, that the reality is that Yes, they might be my thoughts and I might have developed them over my uh, time uh, in my career or whatever else it might be uh, in my thought processes and how I interact with the world. But the reality is that there's no original thoughts and someone somewhere has written it down and has put it, has generated the, uh, the intellectual process which led to me having my thought. And so giving them the credit for it is, of course, very important. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's been a bit of a learning and I guess the second element to that as well with referencing that I find is it's not just what you said there, which is just acknowledging their thought. It's, from my perspective, it's also backing up your thought. So it is your thought. The first point is the point that you've made is your point. It's just you've backed it up with someone else's point. You said, look, this guy agrees with me. 
that's what I like to think of it as. That's how I've got over <laughs> the idea thing. That's from my experience of writing. That's how I personally get over the ego of attachment to my points I make. <laughs> that's a very, very insightful uh, way of thinking about it. Uh, and you've reminded me about something that uh, might be of interest. The um, time before, it, so my previous assignment uh, was on individual differences. And I had the, I, I was really keen to involve the uh, thoughts on intelligence and uh, how they might have uh, impacted on this particular individual we had to do a case study on. So I had this thought process of how it might work and could I find any references that would back up my thought process? It was agony. I spent literally hours and hours looking and at abstract after abstract after abstract, trying to find some sort of uh, justification for why I'm thinking what I might be thinking. And um, so I guess the uh, where that got me to is I needed to sort of find my uh, way of getting through my thoughts to a point where it justified my position. Um, and it, you, what I would recommend for anybody is spending time with uh, one of the librarian drop-in sessions, or uh, I, I was lucky enough to have one-to-one -one time with a librarian to actually sort of hone my uh, how I use the search skills. So doing that really helped me in the first place. And then I used every single resource I could possibly use. Uh, uh, Google Scholar, I used. Uh, I even used Deep Dive, which is a sort of um, a paid-for service, but you can use it for free briefly. And I used also every everything that I could find to try and get a way to sort of justify my thinking thinking. And I had to make a couple of adjustments. And I guess this is one other thing that's important is don't be so attached to an idea yeah. that you're not willing to give up. I got to where I wanted to in the end. And um, I was happy enough with the, the end product. So I think what's interesting is you've talked about how you've got support from the university, but also about how researching has well, researching's changed definitely since when you were doing it with what you said about referencing. Um, I think an interesting way that you went about your research then is you had your idea when you wanted to find research that backed up that idea. Um, yes. I've not researched in that, in, that, in that same way before, but I think what's interesting about what your style of research is, is it's a style that's very personal to you that you've built on. And it's something that you mentioned earlier that I wanted to touch upon a bit more, which is about how you mentioned advice as personal and the path that people yeah. take as personal. And I think... I would agree. I think the advice that we give in this podcast, for example, and the advice from your experience, is that it's based on your background and your experience. And whilst it is still good advice, often that advice may not work purely for that person. So I think, I don't know if you would agree with this, if people should try and use other people's experiences, but also try and find their own path. I 100% agree. Just because I find a way of doing something doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody. And one of the key um, one of the key points that I would make through all of this is that anybody who does listen to this will hopefully say, "Oh gosh, I'll give that a go," or "I'll try that," or "I'll oh that might work for me." But don't be thinking for a second <laughs> that just because it's worked for somebody else means it's going to work for you. Um, you do absolutely need to find your own. I've actually written this down in my notes. Find your own route. Try things out. Um, give everybody, a, give everything a go. Listen to everybody. Uh, but ultimately, it will be your way for you that will work. Mm. So what advice do you have for coping with the pressures of returning to completing assignments? If you're worrying about getting an essay done, an assignment done, and you're you're sweating, thinking, "My God, I've got, I've got to do this. I've got to get this done." You know, and you're thinking every second is precious, and I've just no, I've got no time to waste. Then that situation, that state that you're building yourself into, is actually it's just not going to help because you will not be able to think about what it is that you need to write. So one of the things that um, I would always advise is is, is take breaks. Um, you know, even when you're under that pressure. Um, I know that um, the deadline feels really close uh, and um, that you're just feeling that point where you've just got no time for anything else. But even so, take 10 minutes, 
you know, walk around the garden, or if you don't have a garden, walk around a flat, you know, do something to sort of do something different, open a window, breathe some fresh air, uh, listen to music, do something that, that you enjoy that relaxes you um, before carrying on. The other, the other thing I'd say, the other thing I'd say is that it is important to ask for help when you need it. One of the biggest lessons that I've had to learn is that um, I am not superhuman and I am not uh, capable of overcoming every single problem on my own. And sometimes I need help. And when you're sort of working away on an essay or an assignment and you're desperately trying to get it done, you might not have left yourself enough time. <laughs> and if that is the case, you're just going to have to be honest. You're going to have to be honest. And you're going to have to hold your hand up and you're going to have to say to whoever it is that you need more time. And, um, you know, there are consequences, but, you know, 90 times out of 100, you'll be heard and listened to and hopefully given more time. Uh, but if you don't, then, well, you're not going to win anyway. So you're better off asking for help and acknowledging that you need it. Um, and the earlier, the better. You know, if you know you're going to struggle for whatever the reason might be, then ask for help right away, you know, or say that you might need it uh, right away, because at least forearmed is forewarned and then somebody can come in and, and help you. Hmm. I think that's really some really excellent advice that you've given there. Um, I would agree with quite a lot of actually. So in relation to your point about taking a break, I think it's just hugely, it's so important. I think sometimes if you take a day off, you, you'll be surprised by the breakthroughs that you can do on the next day. I've just had the first weekend off that I've had in ages because my exams are finished. And I've had a breakthrough uh, with my thinking for this series, for example. And that's because I'm, I'm fresh. And the same goes for your assignments and your exams. Even if you can't take a full day, I'll take a few hours off and it'll definitely help you. Yes, without a doubt. Um, and... <laughs> It is it's easy. It's so easy. People, some people listening to this will be thinking, well, it's easy to say because, you know, I'm never in that situation when I have time. It's always when it's right at the last minute that, that I'm up against the deadline. Uh, but, you know, the simple fact is that at every situation, there is a time where you can build it in that you can sort of say, right, I'm going to have 10 minutes away, five minutes away, or whatever it might be, just to give yourself a little bit of air, a little bit of something else. Um, you mentioned sleep and, uh, or, you know, coming back to something fresh after sleeping. That's something that I've also uh, noted down. Uh, sleeping on, on an issue, sleeping on a problem is a fantastic way of, of breaking it down and almost certainly coming back with a, an, a way around it, even if you don't have a groundbreaking idea. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, just a few seconds ago, actually, uh, if people have problems with um, organizing their time and they find themselves in a situation with no time, um, that can be a, an issue and you may not feel like you've got the time to ask for help or to do that. Well, another episode that has come up by now uh, in the series is an episode about organization uh, where I speak, to Dr. Mm. I speak to Caroline Ball about how you can organize yourself. And a lot of that is about organizing it, organizing your time for, in a way that helps your own well-being. And that is a perfect example. If you feel that you're so stressed that you can't take time to think, I then I definitely, if you feel that you're in that scenario, watch that episode um, and have a listen to it because there's loads of great advice in that. It's called or, uh, Organization is the name of the episode. Okay, so I have one last question great. for you, unless you have something else that you'd like to add, uh, which is uh, what do you think your advice is for someone who wants to be successful as a student? Well, funnily enough, uh, you just mentioned the first thing, uh, which is organization. Um, and the way I put it is um, set timetables. So set a time that you're going to do things and then be flexible. <laughs> so, you know, you've got to sort of realize that things will be knocked. And one of the things that uh, we're not great at is when something's, you know, moved because of something that's outside of your control. We're like, oh, for goodness sake, I've not done it now. And, uh, you know, I've messed everything up and it's all out of kilter and whatever else. Be flexible, you know, understand that these things will happen and then 
rebuild them and re-put them into a plan and then forgive yourself because you know even if it was your fault that something got shifted or you know you forgot something else then you know forgive yourself because we all make mistakes and you will get there the second the second thing is um a bit unusual it was advice that was given to me about 20 years ago and i i took a, a few years to get it and that is um uh, be a tree <laughs> So what do I mean by that? I mean that if you're a tree growing in the woods and um, you're not spending all your time looking at all the other trees and thinking, oh gosh, they're bigger than me, they're stronger than me, uh, they've got greener leaves than I have, they have a wonderful russet tone in autumn, which I just don't have. What I have learned from this, and I spent an awful lot of my early career doing, was looking at other people and thinking, oh gosh, they're doing better than me. Or, you know, they've got a, a, a better car than me, or they've got this, or they've got that, or they're just more, in, more intelligent than I am, and they're more uh, creative. There you go, creation again. They're more creative than I am. And, and what, what am I doing wrong? The simple fact is that we all have our own capabilities. We all have our own uh, things to bring to the uh, to the table so be yourself be a tree don't worry about what everybody else is doing just do what you do and do it as well as you possibly can That's and really absolutely the same counts for students uh the next thing i noted down uh was maybe this is peculiar to me uh but maybe not is have a nap <laughs> i almost every day We'll have a nap. Um, sometimes 10, 15 minutes is plenty. I would advise never to have much more than half an hour because then you wake up feeling really quite uh, dozy and it's difficult. And I know it's all about deep sleep and you can go and, inter you can go and research it yourself. But 10 to 15 minute naps uh, allow me to refocus in the evening. I've been at work all day, get home around about half past six, seven o'clock. I have my dinner. I have a, a very short nap and then I get on to my study. Uh, that's what works for me. Doesn't mean it worked for you. So remembering what we said earlier, and which is really my next point, it's try everything, give it a go. Um, it might work for you, but you will eventually find what does work for you. Um, and your own route, your own way of doing things is is always going to be the best way for you, obviously. Um, the, the next thing is, is a difficult balance, but you should be demanding. I don't see any harm in being demanding of yourself. But for goodness sake, forgive yourself if you don't hit whatever goal it is that you've set for yourself. So aim high, but forgive yourself if you don't quite reach that height. I am constantly battling with this. I've definitely not nailed this. I doesn't matter how well I do in my assignment. I always think, oh gosh, I could have just done a little bit better if I'd done a little bit more here and a little bit more there or given myself more time or... Be demanding by all means, but then forgive yourself when you fall a little bit short. And I guess uh, my final point is is on mental health. And that is, um, again, something that it took me a long time to learn, is that mental health isn't something that's a problem for other people. Mental health is something that we all have and we all need to look after. Um, I have suffered with depression when I was younger, and I do sometimes lapse into depressive thoughts now. Being aware of that and understanding that and giving myself time to sort of talk to others and get myself out of that is really important. Um, again, as I've grown up and I'm still growing, um, I've become much more aware of the fact that I am not, as I said earlier on in the interview, superhuman and can't just expect myself to continue regardless of whatever the situation is that I find myself in. Um, and being aware of my mental health and doing stuff to support it, uh, be that, um, as I've said already, walking, taking in fresh air, reading for me, all of these things um, are what I found give me back resilience, give me back the strength I need to uh, carry on. 
I think that's six great pieces of advice there. Um, and I would agree with all of them. I think they're all really important. Specifically, if I had to pick one of them, the one about finding ways that work for yourself, but also forgiving yourself as well and aiming high. I think the forgiving yourself part is definitely something that I can do better. Uh, um, because that, I think, uh, I think it's so crucial. Uh, aim high, but don't hate yourself for not doing it. Such a good piece of advice. Anyways, uh, thank you very much for your time today, Ian. I really appreciated it. Uh, I think you've had some really good uh, piece of advice there for students. And I'm sure students will have found it useful. Thanks to Ian for all the advice given in this podcast. Since recording, Ian has won University of Derby Online Learning Programme Representative of the Year 2021. So congratulations from everyone involved in the podcast. The first key point that I want to highlight from this episode is that things may have changed since your previous time in education, but after a while and after giving yourself time to reflect and adapt, you may feel that this is for the better. So be willing to adapt and you will reap the rewards. The second point is that there is support at the university that can help with some of the key struggles faced by students in returning to university. Ian cited struggles with getting used to academic writing and referencing, and we have lots of workshops and content available that can help with these that are linked in the description of this video. The final key point from this episode is something that I found from working with lots of online students and that is don't expect it to all go right first. So even if things don't go as well as you expected to at the start, if you reflect and try and put the effort in, you can do better in the long run. I've seen so many students from my time at university who didn't do very well in their first assignments because of the break that they'd had. But once they started refining how they write, and how they read, and how they research, and getting used to and adapting to the different technologies that exist now, they reap the rewards. And so, if you are returning to university, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I promise you, even if you're struggling now, you might not be struggling as much in your third year, or in a few years time. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby skills team. Production, episode planning, and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio, and to Lily Kent for transcribing the series. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalavar and Naomi Bowers Joseph for giving feedback and helping in the planning of the episodes. Thank you very much for listening.